Hello, what we're going to do here is demonstrate the JD Squared Model 32 Bender. Comes in two versions, manual and hydraulic. This is the manual version. It sells for around $395. It's the most popular version because most, most benders, race car builders, whatnot, really don't need the hydraulic version. Anyway, what we're going to do, first thing we need to do is put a die in it. Now there's a die already in this machine, so let's take it out and we'll show you just how simple it really is. If you look, the, the drive link did not fall out, so you don't have to worry about that. Just put the drive link back in, insert the die. You notice there's a little rod on it, brass coated rod right there, and that's the anti, that's the pointer for the degree ring. Very simple. It's really nothing more than TIG welding rod. So if you destroy your pointer in operation or whatever, yeah, 15 cents later you got a new one, bend it up, and you get going. All right, the die is in the bender. Now some of the features on the bender. If you notice right here, you see the top of a pin. I don't think you can really see the bottom of it. But essentially there's a ramp machine in the bottom of it that once we engage it, it'll track through these holes and there's ramps machined into these also. And as the die rotates, once it gets under a hole um, or over hole, it'll essentially lock the die up. That prevents it from springing back. We also use a secondary anti-spring back system, which is just a two ratchet mechanism. First ratchet does the bending. Second ratchet is the actual anti-spring back. What I mean by any spring back is when you release pressure on the die, we do not want the die to counter rotate. If it does, you'll get an air gap underneath the tubing in the die. Next thing you know, you got wrinkling or, or other things and you're not a happy camper no more. So anyway, what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and put the tubing in the bender. This is inch and a half, 134 wall or something like that. Um, the order that I like to put them in is the, obviously the die first. Then we're gonna put the follow bar, I mean the U-strap on. And what we're going to do is tighten down this bolt right here. What this bolt's purpose is, is to prevent the tubing from sliding back through the bender as you're bending. Um, very important. If she slides back, especially with thin wall tubing, what's going to happen? She's going to wrinkle. I don't know if you can see it, but if you notice, the dies are meticulously machined. Um, very close tolerances, our own profile. They are not round dies, they're a specific profile um, that we've determined over the last quarter century produces the best quality bends. What we're going to do now is we're going to engage this, this mechanism. Now to adjust it, if you were to put a new die, and this one had to be pre-adjusted, but let's unadjust it. You basically have it like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to rotate the die until she falls into a hole. Then you're just going to tighten the set screw down while, it's, while the pin's in the hole in the frame. And you're pretty much adjusted. That's it. Take it out, rotate it, drop it down. It, it will not fall in another hole, so you don't have to worry about that. Just take it and rotate it. Now at this point, we're ready to put the follow bar in. Here's our follow bars right here. Obviously it's been used a couple times. But anyway, we machine them. Um, we cast and machine this very special material here. And its claim to fame is it's, a very, it's an anti-galling material. It doesn't scratch the tubing. It doesn't really require oiling. Um, it's only sold by a couple places in the country, aerospace, places like that. But we use it in our benders because we've determined it's the, the best way to go. All follow bars are marked, machined in, with the direction it's up, top, what hole it goes in, all the holes are marked right down to bender, one through six, so you'll know, and um, the size and the radius. Every follow bar is machined to a very specific angle, um, and that has to do with the diameter of the tubing and the radius. We, all, we have a special program we've written, a computer calculates that, the variables go into our CNC's and out comes the die. Anyway, let's put the follow bar in. I'm not going to use oil on this. If I was to put a little oil on it, it'd probably be a little bit easier to bend, but it's no big deal. Anyway, we're going to rotate the anti-springback pin right now to this position, and if you can see, it's up a little bit because obviously it hasn't fallen into one of the holes. At this point, we're going to adjust our degree ring. We have an adjustable degree ring here with our little brass pointer. The brass shows up very good against the black surface, by the way. That's why we use yellow out here. Same reason. And all it is is underneath here, there's a little nut, one inch nut, and you just tighten it hand tight. Don't put a wrench on it. Anyway, at this point, we're ready to bend. So let's start. Let's say we're going to go, well I'm sorry, let's, um, let's take the play out first, then adjust the degree ring. You wouldn't know I've been doing this for 25 years if you watched me. Alright, All right. let's start a bending. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the first rope and I'm going to let the second ratchet engage. Now, I'm putting pressure on my thumb. There's nothing automatic about this, so just a little pressure, she drops in. And we just keep on going.
All right, ready? Now what we're going to look for, if you notice right here, we're going to see this pin drop. And this pin's going to drop into that hole right there, right now. At that point, we're going to disengage the lower anti-spring back ratchet, and we're going to basically disengage the other ratchet. Now, all we have to do is remove the drive pin, rotate the drive link to the next hole position, drop it in, we're ready to continue on. If you look at our bins, we are now at 46 degrees. Probably on this tubing here, we're probably going to want to bend maybe three inches past 90, or, I'm sorry, three degrees past 90 to account for spring back, maybe a little more, depending on your material. This stuff's a little tougher than your average inch and a half, no big deal. I'm actually pulling on the handle that comes with the machine. You need a little more leverage. Home Depot sells inch and a quarter pipe, which works pretty well. Let's see, believe it or not, we're at 95 degrees. It's gonna to have to be good enough. What we're gonna do at this point, the pin is engaged right here. We're gonna rotate it so that we can get the, um, obviously get the die out of there. And then um, we're gonna take a little pressure here, pull it around this way, and pull the tubing out. Right. Put that right there. Loosen up our bolt. Alrighty, and out comes the tubing. That's about the quality you can expect from a JD squared bender. Um, this is achieved because over the last 28 years, we've determined what groove profiles to use. They are not round grooves, they're a special profile. And we've determined how to machine the follow bars, etc. So that's pretty much it right there. Um, bender comes complete, minus dies, of course, they're all optional because we don't know what size you're gonna need. Comes with the complete handle system, all ratchets, on a Model 32, we have bronze bushings, extra heavy pin construction, basically one of the strongest benders you can buy on the market. And that's your Model 32.